All right. Well, what a great crowd for the first uh, seminar of 2024. I'm really pleased. And I'm really happy uh, that Benedict agreed to join us today. I'm a big fan of her work. And we specifically asked if she could talk about sort of the microbiology of the subsurface uh, and what she's been doing uh, in relationship to carb fix, but also basic research and how it informs this really important area of science. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, take it away. Thank you very much and, and thank you for the invitations. So you may probably already know some of the results I, I will present today, but I took the occasion to highlight some important idea that relate to uh, uh, any subsurface geoengineering and the fact that uh, uh, we should, uh, all the work we are doing around the subsurface uh, ecosystem are important and will be important in the future for the implementation of uh, such uh, technologies. So it's some the, the results I have gathered so uh, are part of a of a work that uh, I started many years ago in fact uh, almost ten years ago, and it involved a lot of people here at IPGP but also uh, different colleagues from Germany and 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 and, and friends. So and we gathered different type of funding all around this uh, period. Uh, to so, uh, uh, sorry for that. Um, so, in in the face of today climate change challenges, so what I wanted to highlight is that the first kilometers of the Earth's crust are currently uh, scrutinized with uh, increasing interest, and this relates to the fact that uh, in the first kilometers of the crust, then uh, we still have a lot of uh, fossil resources, but also geothermal energy that will be key for our future energy strategies. And it's also, as you can see on, on the right, that it's it's uh, uh, already, but will be uh, increasingly uh, uh, the location for uh, uh, storage of uh, different type of, of, of gases, including uh, uh, the, uh, carbon dioxide that, that we want to release into the atmosphere, but also uh, in the next future, some uh, hydrogens, and that will be uh, all the microbial reactivity will be key for, for such kind of operations. So when we, we, we look at all this kind of operation, and I will detail them in, in, in these slides, what we can see when we range from uh, conventional uh, oil and gas uh, exploration, but also enhanced oil recovery or enhanced gas recovery, but also um, all the exploitation of uh, geothermal energy, as you can see on, on the right, uh, and uh, but also waste storage and gas storage as carbon dioxide storage, uh, um, and, and also a, a lot of other related activities, such as the uh, exploitation of tight gas. We can see uh, on, on, on this graph that uh, we have uh, uh, depth ranges uh, for all these kind of technology that uh, overlaps uh, and uh, it will uh, concern uh, uh, at least uh, the first kilometers uh, of, of the crust. And what is first uh, uh, prominent in, in this graph is that uh, in at some point we will have uh, some conflict of use in the uh, exploitation of, 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 of these resources, of the storage of these gates, and, and some Sometimes it's, it, it's, it is blind that uh, uh, this technology will also be combined uh, all together. So uh, it will uh, uh, imply some uh, careful uh, investigations to be sure that, uh, uh, for example, the resource in uh, potable water and so on will not be uh, affected. But as you all know, uh, this is also the first kilometers of the crust uh, are also the, the place where we have discovered all these type of microbial life and uh, all the places where uh, this technology will be implemented are also now well-known microbial habitats, 
uh, ranging from groundwater, groundwater and deep uh, aquifers up to um, uh, oil hydrocarbon uh, depleted reservoirs, uh, uh, but also some places uh, uh, of the oceanic crust. So uh, we will have to, 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 to face the questions of this multiple use of the surf, 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 surface in the, in the next futures, but also, the, uh, also recognize that uh, due to um, uh, its uh, potential to host uh, high uh, biomass and high diversity, then we will have to uh, convince also all the, uh, the, 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 the people involved in the deployment of this technology to take this into account. And I will try to convince you that we have uh, already some examples uh, uh, highlighting the fact that we should care about these deep microbes uh, when uh, in the deployment of uh, these technologies. So this will be the, the 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 key question of of my of of my talks, and I will first start, uh, start with example that uh, uh, deals with uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, storage because this is the one on which I have uh, uh, the largest uh, experience and I have uh, uh, some uh, field style site story to tell you uh, to to highlight the importance of microbial activity in, in such kind of uh, technologies. So when we start uh, uh, investigation some years ago, and uh, nothing was really well known about the potential impact of deep subsurface microbes. And uh, we try on such kind of graphs to uh, summarize what could be the potential impact, even uh, if uh, nothing was really well documented in the, in the literatures. So storing CO2 in the subsurface uh, means that uh, it will not be most of the time uh, pure CO2, and it will be very frequent to also inject some SOX, NOX, and impurity that uh, could um, uh, uh, be of importance uh, also for, for, for microbes. And then, as you all know, then uh, 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 Carbon uh, dioxide can be uh, a carbon source for subsurface microbes, and we could anticipate a simulation by autotrophs uh, uh, leading to, for example, the 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 the, the increase of, in biomass the production, also of uh, gases that derive from metabolic activity, and that could be uh, not expected uh, for the safe deployments of uh, gas storage technology. It includes CH four and uh, also N2O, which are both uh, very um, um, uh, uh, greenhouse gas with, uh, with um, uh, uh, high impact. But also it means that uh, in some times uh, uh, H2S can also be byproduct that could be uh, a deleterious to uh, facilities, but also uh, 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 dangerous for, for, for uh, the surrounding environment. But what was not uh, all uh, really well known uh, at that time, uh, in addition to um, the potential direct assimilation of carbon dioxide, was the indirect role of uh, subsurface metabolic activity on the environmental conditions and how all these deep microbes can influence pH and redox condition, for example, uh, will, will uh, in turn also impact uh, the geochemical uh, equilibrium, equilibria in the subsurface and, uh, uh, for example, so the, the rate of uh, rock alteration, uh, uh, but also uh, the, uh, the rate of uh, new mineral formations that could have interest for example, in the case we will look at uh, the carbonation uh, of CO2. We also had uh, some questions on the impact uh, of this deep microbial activity on porosity and permeability, which are key components when we start, when we try to uh, do some geoengineering operations, because if you inject fluid, then you need uh, elevated porosity and also permeability. It's If microbes can have an impact on that, then it will change the deal for the overall uh, uh, gas storage activity. So what was difficult 
uh, for the, the the modeling potential modeling and and and, and uh, anticipation of of the of this kind of of, of operation what the fact that uh, the composition uh, of the community will depend on the environmental condition and the lithology and it was uh, uh, one of the the break was that uh, due to the complexity of the crystal biosphere functioning in space and times so it was difficult to to have uh, some theoretical uh, uh, approach of the questions and the pilot site study where uh, uh, when we started the, among the most instructive sources of observation and, and knowledge. So this is why I, I, I bring you in Iceland where, where we have studied all this kind of, of um, uh, monitoring and, 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 uh, and studies. And we worked since uh, 2010 uh, on the uh, Icelandic pilot site of, uh, of cap cap carbon capture and storage, uh, which is associated with the Etlishaidi uh, power plant uh, located um, uh, in the Reykjanes Peninsula in, in Iceland. So geothermal energy produce a lot of CO2 and H2As during their, 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 their exploitations. And uh, uh, due to the increasing level of, uh, of the gaseous uh, emission they had uh, uh, since uh, the development of such technology in Iceland, they wanted to uh, get rid of this kind of uh, emission, but also uh, to make the, the the demonstration that uh, uh, injecting CO2 in, in, in Icelandic rocks can be one of the key uh, to mitigate uh, uh, the problem we had with climate ch change. The idea behind uh, is that uh, uh, all these um, uh, power plants uh, lies on, on basalt, which made uh, most of the, which made the, 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 the uh, uh, Iceland, and uh, uh, we know that basalt are, are highly reactive uh, to uh, carbon dioxide, and uh, based on the combination of uh, dissolutions and uh, precipitation reactions, it uh, we it is well known that uh, uh, all the iron, uh, uh, magnesium bearing silicate from basalt facilitate the conversion of carbon dioxide into uh, solid carbonates and, uh, and some uh, uh, silicon that remains. And ha having CO2 in the form of carbonates is really uh, something that, uh, could, uh, that uh, could allow to store CO2 safely for uh, long times and, and get rid of all this uh, CO2 in, in the atmospheres. So in at that time, uh, from a geochemical and geological point of view, they expected high rates of carbonation uh, thanks to this reactivity. So they have start uh, this uh, pilot site project at the CAPFIX-1 uh, uh, site. And here you can see a cross section uh, of the lithology and, and, and the overall the project benefited from. So here you've got in blue and greens, all the lava flow that uh, uh, are made of a different type of uh, uh, volcanic formation, some lava flow in blue and also some yellow plastic formation in, in green. And uh, all the the groundwater were circulating from uh, east to 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 west over uh, an area of several kilometers, and uh, the the uh, the site benefits benefited from different deep and and shallow holes that first allow uh, on on at the level of the well HN2 you can see on the right i don't know if you see my mouse but uh, uh, that allow inject injecting the co2 mixed with groundwater and follow the fate of the uh, gas that were injected in in the in the lava flow and see uh, the evolution and the reactivity of the basalts uh, and uh, assess uh, the um, um, assay their fate and their potential transformation into solid carbonates. So in that area, the depth that what concerns lies between 400 and 800 meters, and the temperature were quite low because it ranged between 20 and 50 degrees, which which is quite mild for for life to to develop. 
so in, it is in that place that we have uh, deployed our, uh, our microbial monitorings, uh, and it was uh, made in two phases. Uh, uh, first, when uh, they have uh, injected pure CO2 at the first stage of, during the first stage of the project, and then we will see also how microbes reacted to a mixed injection of CO2 and uh, H2, H2, H2S later in uh, during the project. So for, for you to better understand uh, the microbial reactivity, uh, let's uh, come back on, on some results that were published by the, the CARPFIX groups uh, on the temporal geochemical evolution of the groundwater in the first monitoring one, so the, the one that is located the closest uh, from the to the injection uh, wells. And they have... Uh, they have monitored uh, 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 any kind of uh, uh, truss, uh, major and minor and truss element, as you can see on the bottom of the graph, highlighting the, the evolution of magnesium, calcium, and, and iron. But also they have monitored the, the evolution of the dissolving organic carbon, you can see in gray, and the, the pH. And uh, the axis, the horizontal axis, show you the evolution with times uh, uh, after the injection uh, of pure CO2, the first gray box you can see on the left, and also uh, after the, the in injection of CO2 and H2S, uh, the uh, box, gray boxes you can see in the middle of the graphs. And during that time, we were able to do some uh, microbial uh, sampling, so, uh, and this is the, the, the vertical dotted lines. And we, um, we were uh, lucky to have samples at um, a time that were also uh, relevant times uh, concerning the evolution of the, geochemic of the geochemical parameters. To summarize them, then we can see further that following the CO2 injections, when you look at the evolution of pH, then the, 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 the first impacts were the acidification of the groundwater, a decrease of the pH that was concomitant uh, when you look at the gray lines, concomitant with the, the increase in DIC, telling you that there is a real direct relationship in between pH decrease and acidification by the dissolved uh, CO2. And those uh, were also concomitant with an increase of the um, dissolved cations in the form, for example, here of magnesium and calcium and iron. And you can see uh, all this increase in uh, major cations uh, that sign uh, uh, the dissolution of the basalt following the, the, the acidification of the, of the groundwaters. So uh, whereas calcium and magnesium show you some concomitant evolution through times, then we can see that uh, for iron, it was a little bit different, even though uh, this kind of evolution was not uh, directly explained by, uh, by the, the geochemical uh, or water rocks reaction only. So what we did is that, uh, as I told you, we sampled the groundwater for, uh, uh, to, to document the, the evolution of the microbial diversity. And also we sampled that uh, at the level of the, the well that was uh, characterized uh, from a geochemical point of view by the CAPFIX groups, but also, as you can see in purple, in a controlled well that was located upstream, just to be sure that the evolution we observe uh, uh, on microbial uh, on the microbial composition of the groundwaters were due to uh, the, the the presence of CO two and not uh, due to the envir environmental variability of the of the groundwaters. So at that time, we only had some uh, um, um, the the possibility. Uh, first to, to sequence uh, 16A uh, um, RNA, uh, the gene that got for 16A RNA, and we did that through times. And uh, here I have just 
uh, indicated with the with the orange box uh, the period at which the 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 the, the CO two was maximums and at which the the pH decrease uh, was uh, also the 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 highest. So uh, the the period at which uh, the ground water in in the well we samples. Uh, I have seen the, the highest levels of, of injected CO2. And you can see from left uh, to, to right the evolution with times of the uh, microbial uh, uh, composition of the, of the groundwater. So the first uh, point related to uh, the state before the injection and then the CO2 came and then we came back to a kind of a, 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 uh, uh, regular level. So here are first the, 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 the result obtained on the control well, uh, showing you uh, the variability in terms of relative composition of the microbial communities. And here is below what we have obtained in the injection wells uh, uh, facing the, the arrivals of the acidifying CO2 and the dissolution of the, 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 the basalt. What we can see on this plot is that uh, uh, when the, 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 the uh, concentration in DIC was the highest, then we have a huge change in the microbial community compositions, moving from something that was dominated by chlorobi and nitrospirae uh, to uh, 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 groundwater that were fully dominated by beta proteobacteria. And uh, among these beta proteobacteria, then some uh, a huge part was composed of Gallionaceae, uh, and 35% uh, 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 were uh, made from, uh, and the 35% uh, 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 rep were represented by uh, some. Uh, um, uh, strains affiliated to the uh, genus Sideroxidans and specifically Sideroxidans lithotrophicus that is known to uh, consume CO2 and uh, oxidize hydrants. So um, uh, we then first uh, evidence a bloom of beta proteobacteria uh, that is, was uh, strictly related to, to, to the, the, the injection of pure uh, CO2. We did some statistical analysis uh, highlighting the, the direct relationships uh, uh, between the, the evolution of the microbial community compositions and the evolution of the geochemical conditions, the increase in hyrans, manganese concentrations, and the decrease in, in, in pH to support uh, 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 the observation uh, that have been made using uh, tag sequencings. And, and also some um, quantitative uh, PCR analysis allow us to uh, really um, uh, quantify uh, the, 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 the bloom of beta proteobacteria that was uh, promoted by the CO2 injections. So once again, you can see on the x-axis the evolution with time. So with the first uh, uh, dot uh, point being related to the pre-injection states, uh, in uh, um, the, the highest concentration in, in DIC, that uh, as, as it was observed using the uh, tax sequencing that directly relate to the bloom of beta proteobacteria. So it was really a huge increase in, in, in biomass uh, and, and, and we have uh, in groundwaters uh, an increase uh, by a factor of uh, 500 compared to uh, the, 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 the pre-injection states. So what, what what was also striking is what what happened uh, just after uh, uh, the pure CO2 injection when they have started on the site to inject a mix of CO2, H2S, and hydrogen, which is the mix that dairy from uh, the power plants uh, after some uh, some purification by the, the gas stations, and when you we we start to 
investigated uh, uh, the, 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 the biomass after this uh, uh, mixed gas injection in the, in the injection wells. Then we, you can see on these graphs that the different uh, uh, sampling, we, uh, sampling we have made uh, at different uh, depths in, in the injection wells uh, really show you that uh, at that place, uh, following the mixed gas injections, then we have a, 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 a still a, a, an increased biomass. And compared to what have been observed during the pure CO2 injection, then it was uh, uh, much more important at that levels following the, the mixed gas in injections. So we had uh, also uh, during this sampling the occasion to 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 take some rock samples that were uh, coming with the groundwater so when the, the the well was flushed, and we did some observation of these uh, fragments of of basalt. So here you can see, for example, some imaging uh, that have been made using. Uh, scanning electron microscopy. So here some chemical distributions of, of, bas uh, of elements in the, in the basal particles uh, on the tops, and also some observations of, uh, of the mineral phase using backscattered electron uh, microscopy. And what we can see here is the regular assemblage you can expect for a basalt made of pyroxene and, and plagioclase. But also what was uh, uh, evident in this particle is that the presence of a bright phase uh, that were uh, uh, pervasively uh, uh, impregnating the, 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 all the, the crystalline basalts. And all this um, um, phase, uh, white phase you can see here were in fact um, uh, iron sulfide that were not initially present in the crystalline basalt at that le levels. So uh, when we looked uh, much more closely uh, at this iron sulfide and what was striking and what you can see on, on the image on the, on the right, which is a, a secondary electron image, we, 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 it was uh, really evident that uh, all this iron sulfide you can see here, looking at uh, the accumulation of small grains, is that it was covered by uh, bacteriomorph or, or material that was made of, of carbon and looked like uh, 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 microbial cells. The associated uh, microbial diversity that was uh, um, uh, highlighted through a metagenomic uh, uh, approach uh, was uh, uh, first showed that uh, uh, the microbial community that were sampled in that wells was mostly uh, made of uh, composed of uh, tubacillus species, and uh, it was also. Um, confirmed by fluorescence in situ hybridization that the tubacillus species related specially to uh, the, the, the iron sulfide that were uh, also impregnating all the crystalline basalt. So when we look at using uh, uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy uh, at the uh, 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 structural uh, sulfur uh, oxidation states, then we have uh, seen, thanks, thanks to a collaboration with colleagues from Denmark, that uh, the sulfide were not uh, completely uh, reduced sulfide and that at the surface, as you can see on this plot, showing you the evolution of the binding energy um, that uh, uh, at the surface, we had some uh, uh, sulfur in the sulfate states, whereas in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the more deeply in the, in the, in the mineral grains, the, uh, the, the, the sulfur was uh, under its reduced forms. When 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 we look uh, at higher resolution at this sulfide, then the this for example these two images that related to the same area, you can see with the green arrow, uh, the particle that is highlighted in in both image, you can see that when you look at at when we looked at the basalt uh, uh, at uh, high energy, then uh, the sulfides look like uh, something that were um, corroded and 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 and. and and, and uh, partly ongoing uh, dissolutions. 
And the, the image you can see on the left at low energy show you in addition that uh, all these sulfates were uh, um, trapped in a material that was made of uh, low Z elements, uh, typically something that could be related to uh, organic materials, uh, probably a dense EPS matrix embedding all these uh, sulfides. So uh, um, we did uh, a lot of observation of these kinds, and this led us to uh, really um, highlight, uh, build a, a story of what happened following the pure CO2 and uh, the, 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 the injection of a gas mix, uh, of the gas mixtures made of CO2 and H2S. So that is illustrated on these two pictures. Uh, on these pictures, sorry. So here you can see, for example, the 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 the, the basaltic grains uh, that is uh, 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 with which the, the the basalt the crystalline basalt is 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 made of, and these basaltic grains is uh, as we have seen already on previous pictures. Uh, completely uh, encrusted by uh, uh, iron sulfates. We have established that these iron sulfates were uh, produced completely abiotically, and it's likely the result of the interaction of the H2S that was injected with the CO2 that has reacted with the basalt forming this um, uh, iron sulfide all around the, 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 the basalt grains. And then the precipitation of this iron sulfide then uh, promoted the development of uh, uh, huge bacterial biofilms that, that was um, uh, mainly made of uh, Tubacillus species that was very abundant in the in the mag we have reconstructed, and uh, probably using either the reduced sulf uh, sulfur or the reduced iron in this uh, iron sulfide. And uh, all of this, uh, as we have seen on the previous SEM image, uh, lead to the development of a dense biofilm all around the, the basal particles. And then the metabolic byproduct of this uh, uh, first microbial development uh, led to the precipitation, as we can see then, oops, here, all around the, the biofilm, encrusting cells and, 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 and biofilms, this leads to the precipitation of iron oxide that were sometimes, as you can see on the, on the, on the right, uh, uh, encrusting uh, all the microbial cells um, and probably uh, that uh, corresponded to uh, the, the second stage of the, of the, the sequence, second, second consequences of the microbial de uh, development following uh, the injection of the gas mixtures. So we really um, uh, have seen here uh, a direct uh, f feedback from the deep microbial activity following the, the um, uh, H2S and CO2 injections. So it was two, two, two major results I wanted to, to, to show you just to really uh, illustrate it that uh, uh, in, in, the, in this uh, uh, first pilot sites that have been developed in, in Iceland, um, then uh, really uh, in, uh, in this uh, low temperature uh, environment, then the micro played uh, a key role uh, uh, during that uh, gas injections. And uh, we have shown, and I had to make it short, uh, but I can answer to question if you want more details. Um, uh, we have shown uh, during this microbial monitoring that some of the injected uh, CO2 uh, can be converted to, to biomass, either EPS or, or, or cells. Uh, uh, with uh, nonetheless an unknown stability and fate. So uh, compared to what was expected for uh, carbonation of CO2, then uh, the, the balance in between both processes should be considered if you want, we really want to deploy this in uh, under uh, uh, habitable conditions in, in, in basalts. Uh, what we also have seen uh, is that uh, the fact that we had a bloom of iron oxidizing bacteria 
uh, really uh, show that uh, we have an influence of the microbial activity in deep aquifer on the global redox states uh, of the groundwaters. And the, this redox state is important uh, for fluid drop reaction uh, because uh, uh, we know that uh, it can influence um, um, it can uh, influence the dissolution rates of basalt, uh, basaltic mineral, for example. So this is something that is impacting for the overall process. And during the, 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 the injection of the gas mixtures, and uh, it was uh, much more striking because uh, all the biominerals, the, the, the uh, iron oxide and, and, the, and the EPS uh, exopolymers I, I show you on all this image, really uh, were the direct response of microbes to gas injections. And they are likely responsible for uh, the reservoir clogging in that site and the site shut down because after that operation, they only have injected a very little quantities of uh, gas mixtures and they had to shut down uh, just because of these uh, uh, injectivity uh, problems and, and the fact that uh, the no gas can be injected anymore after, the, after this bloom. And so uh, the conclusion was that the storage has to be implemented at uh, um, either higher depths uh, and temperature. In Iceland, it's more convenient because you can move laterally to a place that is closer to a, a magmatic chamber and increase the temperature. But really, uh, if we want to avoid the, the effect, the microbial um, reactivity and really uh, uh, reach the goal of full uh, CO2 carbonation based on basalt reactivity, then you, you have to get rid uh, from uh, microbial activity and, be, and, and, and place your storage at a temperature where the life is not developing. So the conclusion was to that conceptual model has to be refined and, and low temperature means life in, in, in basalts and, 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 and an impact of life on the fate of the, the injected gases. So now in Iceland, <coughs> they have developed the, the, another pilot site since some years now, the cap fix to site where they inject CO2 at uh, higher temperatures. So uh, uh, on a much uh, larger scale so in terms of quantity of gas mixture that are injected, but also uh, volumes of, of reservoir. And it's now going well because we are well above 255 degrees without uh, any microbial reactivity. So just to conclude, uh, 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 we have example in the literature that deep microbial reactivity is not only of concerns for CO2 geological storage. I have found some publication, for example, uh, around ton gas storage, uh, I mean methane, that was stored uh, here uh, uh, for the first paper I show you uh, in the southern part of France. And uh, uh, in this paper, they show that really after a, a frequent and, and uh, gas storage over long duration, then you can really uh, have an impact on the overall uh, uh, popula microbial population in the subsurface. And uh, there is no, uh, no comeback on the initial states if the, the gas storage are, uh, is performed at high frequency with uh, high volumes of gas. So really, we, we can impact the ecology of the sub sub subsurface uh, uh, based on this kind of operations. And also, the, the, the other papers uh, report some, uh, uh, also some clogging that can be induced by uh, deep subsurface microbes when you are uh, deploying uh, geothermal pumping uh, in the subsurface. And, and it's really something that could be uh, impacting for the uh, full deployment of the activity. Uh, and sometimes in France, it's of concern because uh, it's, this is all the the, the 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 deployment of of the geothermal strategy that is affected by by such kind of uh, of problems and just to finish and conclude then uh, we we have seen based on this example that 
for gas storage, uh, um, deep surface microbes uh, are important. And I just wanted to to put your to uh, uh, I just wanted you to pay attention on the the upcoming and, and quick development of uh, 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 deep hydrogen underground storage uh, that will uh, develop uh, based on the on the strategy we now have to uh, to to deal with the the temporality of the of the um, electrical energy that are produced by renew, new, renewable uh, energy productions and when there is a high level of production but no consumption then they have planned to try to to convert the electricity into uh, hydrogen based on water electrolysis. So at that time, there will be a lot of hydrogen that will be stored and probably in the subsurface. And then uh, uh, the idea is to uh, take these hydrogens uh, when the, 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 the demand increase and the production decrease. And the target for such kind of por uh, storage are porous re reservoir rocks. Uh, deep aquifers, but also, and this is a main target, salt deposits, and this is not, this is not only halite, but uh, it's information that includes gypsum in the form of uh, uh, calcium sulfate. So maybe uh, in that place, then also uh, we will have interest in looking at the the, the reactivity of microbes because uh, it we we will have all the ingredient and chemical disequilibria. Uh, to uh, promote any uh, hydrogenotrophic uh, microbial uh, activity. And I would like to thank you for the attention and sorry for being a little bit long.